my movie too. Hey everybody, how's it going today? This is your host, Chris Drager, Solaria. and we're here at my Damn new me. podcast. Well, anyway, I hope that there's people out here going to join me today as we go in search of. Anyway, the name of the podcast is The Ancient Arm of Draga Podcast. And anyway, I hope everybody's having a great day. It's a Sunday. And we're going to stop, start this topic out with um, literature. We're going to take literature. We're going to find some things that we can find archaeological and stuff like that, geological evidence that's factual. We'll take some myths, and we'll take facts, myths, and we'll see if there's anything to any of it and see where it goes. Um... We're going to start with one of the why I'm doing this and why I'm going to treat some of the so-called myths as actual facts. You know, there was a German scientist who uh, decided to take a book and follow it, and he did. And I remember growing up and learning about Troy when I was a kid, and I remember it being, you know, as a myth. There, Troy wasn't real. Well, it turns out that, you know, this guy took this book, The Iliad, right here, this literature, which is very good reading, by the way, um, he, and he followed it, and ended up on the shores, and in the long run, basically found Troy, which means it verified that it was real, and, of course, then it has to make you wonder about the rest of the content in this book of course there's other books like that too you kind of have to wonder when you when they prove stuff and we're going to touch base with maybe uh things that have to do with atlantis as you can see and we'll see where this actually goes but we're going to start this day off with uh the very first book of all to start reading and the beginning of all things right well let's start there see what happens when we go there well, this is from the Holy Bible, King James. And I can say this right now. I kind of like my antique version right here. This predates America. has no copyright in it. It's uh, very thick. has great information in it compared to a brand new one. And let me tell you something. That's good read, hard read, good read. So anyway, let's start this thing off and kick it and see where it goes. Uh, let's see here. We got Genesis, supposedly the beginning. So that's what I figure I might as well start this podcast going is in the beginning. See how it works and see if we get any people joining and seeing if they follow. And hey, I don't care where it goes. If people follow me, great. If you don't, that's cool too. I understand. It's all good. Slowly. So anyway, I'm going to start reading this and then we're going to kind of dissect it a little bit as we go and pull out some things that, well, kind of explain some things, I think, and show some things that correlate in my way of thinking. So here we go. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Okay, cool. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of god moved upon the face of the waters oh face of the waters <laughs> makes me think that this place we live on was basically a planet that was solid water and that's very possible i mean water in space google search oh water in space did you hear that I wonder how we came up with it, but I want to look, show you guys something. If you look right up over here, 
I got the cursor. You see that? That's water in zero gravity, and it's holding a sphere. So those of you that are trying to question gravity, which, you know, there's no definite answer for it. Well, how does water stay on a, a sphere? Well, there's water holding a spherical shape right there. So, let's see if we can go... Uh, The firmament of Genesis 1 is solid. There we go, the firmament. And that's what says happens here when we go back over here real quick, is we got the firmament. But that doesn't happen yet. We're in a body of water. Okay, and so we get here to 3, and it says, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Okay, cool. Well, we got light. That's way awesome. I mean... Look at the golden orb up there. That's one big, cool, awesome thing, especially in the summertime. Uh, now what we got next? We got number four is next. And number four, well, heck, it says, And God saw the light that it was good. Well, yeah. I mean, heck, any of us in the summertime, we all think that, I believe. Especially when it warms us up to the bones. Well, anyway, here we go. And God divided the light from the darkness. Oh, that's pretty cool. You know, it it kind of makes me think of the yin yang symbol. I don't know how many of you have ever seen that symbol, but it's light dark. And uh, let me see here. I go to my documents real quick. take a look at something here real quick in my documents I saved it. Nope, I didn't. Sorry, folks. I'll look it up real quick. But the yin yang symbol, when you look at it, it's light and dark and divides pretty uniquely. I'm going to pull that up here later. I want to get back to this anyway. And God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Okay, so we got that over with. Six and God said, Let there be firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Hmm. Well, that's kind of interesting. Waters from waters. Well, let's go back over here real quick. And we've got that. Remember, take take a look at that spherical. Remember that's that's water in a sphere, round. Circular, that's another theme to everything in life, it seems. Yes, the circular. And go over here to the firmament. And like in this, they show this. And we know this, that there's this glowing shimmer. And if you think of an egg shell, and then inside that, You've got that little thin membrane, and inside that's the clear, and inside the clear is the yolk. Well, our planet's kind of made up the same way with a hard sh a shell that's fracturable, a thin membrane. But just think about this. On the outside, no shell, just that thin membrane, keeping us protected from the very deepest part of space. And here's what I'm going to get to here. As we scroll down, one of the cool things about this is the firmament. Well, it gives you a description here about the firmament. Right? Genesis 1, it's telling you about the creation. Well, one of those issues concerns the second day of creation. 
where God made the expansion or the firmament. The Hebrew word for this is Rekai, pronounced Reki. Biblical scholars understand the Reki to be a solid dome-like structure. It separates the water into two parts so that there is water above the Reki and water below it. The waters above are kept at bay so the world can become inhabitable. On the third day, the water below the Reki is gathered to one place to form the sea and allow dry land to appear. Well, that's quite an amazing thing, isn't it? Ancient Israelites saw the barrier, well, saw this barrier when they looked up. Well, can you imagine without the stuff we have today, and there's no street lights, no extra lights like we have, and it's complete darkness, and there's no extra noises, no extra anything going on, and you can observe stuff that you normally can't now. I mean, you can barely observe the stars as it is if you're in a heavily lit city area. you got to go way out there to really see all the stuff. So, anyway, in a certain time frame, yeah, they didn't have TVs and all this stuff. Anyway, back at it, where was I? There were no telescopes, space exploration, or means of testing the atmosphere. They relied on their senses, on what their senses told them, excuse me, even today looking up at the clear sky in the open country the sky seems to begin at the horizon and reaches up far above the ancient Israelites and others in that part of the world assumed the world was flat and yes some of the writing leads you to believe that sort of I believe that if you could take it the rest of the way you can stick with the, the basic story and it still be true like I said, I'm looking at this stuff as factual because if a gentleman can take this book and actually find Troy out of a book called The Iliad and tracing the pathway that Egg Mammon took to get to Troy, and that's how he found it, just by using that book, well then we're going to treat the rest of this as fairly literal. You know, there's literal stuff in stories, but you know, storytellers, they like to hype it up, make you, you know, people want to keep people listening and paying attention, so, you know, they do things to help give extra to the story. So anyway, back at the story, here we go. Um, where was I? Uh, oh, where was I? Oh, I lost... Ancient Israelites and others in that part of the world assumed the world was flat, and so it looked like the earth is covered by the dome and the blue sky is the water above held back by the rakade translation firmament firm i.e. gets across this idea of a solid structure okay well you know what I can buy it Think about what I showed you, that thing of water up in space floating, and it's in a round ball. Even though here they cut it off and make it a flat earth, but imagine that the core, the yolk of the egg, let's say, is the ground, the firmament that comes forth and separates its own out of the water so we're still in a round ball earth with the firmament hard land sticking out of it there's a thin membrane just like in the eggshell you know when you hard boil and you're going to crack and that membrane sticks well, just think, that membrane is what we're looking at up here. You know, that's what we're looking at right here is this membrane, just like in that eggshell. 
and it's going in a circle and there's water there's a thin thing of water too at this point and then there's an area where they let air oxygen and air and here's the thing the reason this is like this and holds and it inflates like it does you know people may think I'm crazy but by going to the motorcycle institute and going to school and learning some few things about liquid law, Barnabas law, you know, Newton, all that stuff got to go to school on and math and well I'm going to tell you something that our motors work on the factor of 14.7 psi at sea level. That's pressure. Well if you think about our planet is a balloon. What's holding it in the shape is pressure. The air pressure with inside it. It's holding, and that thin film is holding back what they call the oceans of heaven. And then there's the primeval ocean down below. But realistically, what they're talking about is there's the ocean of heaven that encircles us there's a membrane and then there's the heaven of heavens past that so you have two membranes is the way I see it or maybe more of a solid mass up here that encircles us more maybe not I'm gonna go with the softer tissue type theory and uh, so it's really po it, it proves that being round is very possible and that we have solid mass that's and where it says underworld right here I find this fascinating I've looked at some other pictures they darken this out to black well in my opinion that's probably our crude oil <laughs> is where we're getting our crude is the underworld because in other photos and ideas of the same pictures I pulled and all I did was pull up firmament just to see what firmament meant when I was reading and this is the first thing they come up with so it's no wonder why people think oh we live on a flat earth well yes when I'm out there sailing and when I've been out of my boat I grant you the water does seek its own level does sit within a container <coughs> excuse me but it takes something to hold it in place. So again, think of the Earth as in a glass of terrarium, maybe. And you stick some land in the bottom of it. And you stick some water in it. You do have kind of the theory of a flat Earth that floats around and moves around. But see, it still moves around in that theory. So it has to be more where it's still all globular no matter what. And the water, how it sticks to the earth exactly, I would say it's all based on this air pressure theory I have. Just like, you know, the dome, the astrodome, it, you know, the air roof, it's held up with air pressure. And we're back to that air pressure. You know, that's how our, that's how our storms work, or high and low air pressure. You know, one's pushing the other. And that's what makes it move. That's what makes air and gas flow through an engine is because of velocity and a high and low pressure difference that happens that helps create this flow well because of air pressure and again at sea level you're at 14.7 and the air pressure changes as you go in elevation this is all fact this is stuff you can prove just by having a gas powered engine and you go up and elevation and the air thins and all of a sudden you're too rich on gas for the air that's up there and you gotta thin out the fuel mixture to compensate for the thin air so you can keep going so there's physical proof of how our system does operate now as far as whether I'm right or wrong I don't know I'm just going with what I said. That guy said he followed this book. And we know today, and you can prove today, that Troy has been found, dug up. No exception to Troy. So then it has to make you wonder about Hercules. 
not only that, but Achilles, which, you know, he happens to be born of a, a human mother and a, a god, making him a semi-god, and he could not be beat until he was into Troy, but he was in love with the woman who had gained all his attention and took his mind off of battle. And while this was happening, he was succumbed by an arrow in his Achilles tendon. Hence, a word we use today, his name lives on in infamy because of it. And he was a demigod. Oh, but that brings us back to the Bible stories again and the Nephilim or the fallen angels that decided to come down to earth because they saw women and they looked beautiful. So they came down and made it with them. Took them, said, hey, we're having you for sex and that's it. Cool. And in the interim, they ended up producing offspring. They were hybrids. At this point in time, hybridization is not an issue because most of us understand there's hybridization. I mean, heck, there's plants that are hybrided, there's food that's hybrid. What isn't hybrided nowadays? I mean, heck, it's amazing what's been hybrided. And water in space. I mean, here's a, that's water in space, but here's another great one about water and space water bubble floating in space right but here's the best one is the spacewalk the moment a water bubble and at tim peaks spacewalk now remember with that diagram i was showing you water above the membrane and then another membrane that takes you into outer outer space or the heavens however you want to look at it I mean it's really up to you I'm not trying to tell you which way I'm just telling you how I see this I doesn't mean you'll see it um, but anyway they see water and that's an amazing thing here let's check this out real quick Hopefully we get this thing to stream. No, oh, that's right. Well, let's run in an ad. My podcast is brought by me, Chris Drager. It's all worked and done by me. So if there's any flaws or foulation on this podcast, you can only blame me. I have, oh, hey, we're back at it. Here, let's watch this real quick. Let me turn this up. Okay, guys, so we're working right now for Tim Copra. We know it's a small amount of water. We already got the location and the quantity. If, if there's any way to get a temperature of the water, I don't know if you can move it around to get to that or to try to drink it and note the taste. It's about uh, three inches or something like that. And uh, if I can make it mobile. Tim Copra reporting uh, a small amount of water inside uh, the helmet of his extravehicular mobility in it. The next little line there is if the DIDB is a confirmed and he's a UK astronaut reported water in his helmet on a space walk boys and girls. This is Mission Ladies Control and Houston gentlemen. at the four hour ten minute mark into today's EBA. Guys you can start opening your cuff checklist to page seven. We are in a terminate case. Okay, copy that. So he has his suit leaking. Well, he's out here Again, in uh, we're not in any space. emergency situation. The crew is just fine outside. All of the other systems Hence on why it's uh, a flat, space the space station is designed the way it is to it's float in space. Because they're floating in water up there. As much as uh, That's a good mate, so. they're floating in water. Because one... Here's what happens in so, the area. Sorry about that. I did not mean I forgot to turn my volume down. But here's what I'm talking about. In the zero gravity of space out there, water holds the form of a globe on its own. So are we spinning and moving? 
I have no idea if we're doing what they say we're doing scientifically, you know, spinning around the sun and doing... I kind of have a hard time finding that. I would say that if you were to watch this bubble and if you interact with it, it jiggles. So, no, I'm going to say that we are stationary in space and other things are moving around us. There's movement. And the reason I say moving around us is because, well, you know, the Bible talks about keeping your timekeeping, not with the watch or a calendar. <laughs> you know, it says not to do witchcraft stuff like that in here, which is amazing. But it also talks about timekeeping and how. But let's get back to it. And God made the firmament and divided the waters, which were under the firmament from the waters which means within this hard substance is encased water which in the story of Noah's flood God supposedly released water from within and from on top to flood the whole thing now that's a good story I'm thinking a little bit more like Something solid from outer space came through, penetrated our very malleable, thin protective layer, and slammed into the water. That's how we got our uh, great floods stories from around the world and other things. Because even the ancients always associated comet sightings with danger, and most of the stories lead that way, even in the Bible. So, here we go. Let's get back to it. So, there was firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. Wait a minute. Heaven isn't heaven. Isn't the firmament solid? So that means that that next barrier out to the heaven heavens is solid. Which means that we theoretically cannot penetrate our way out. If you want to take this literally. So here, let's continue on. And the evening and the morning were a second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. <laughs> and it was so. I like it. So you speak, and it is. Well, there may be a little truth to that. You know, there's people that have proven that they put something into thought, put their thought in the universe, and they concentrated on it. Hard enough, it comes forth. I mean, there's people that have swore by, well, I foresaw me getting to here, and I wrote it down, and I, con and I kept that with me, and that's where I was, and that's what they thought about, and they made it, because that thought is in the universe. Because, well, it says we're all connected, so here we go. Number 10, I think, is where I'm at. And God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters called the sea. Hmm. And God saw that it was good. Right on. And God said, hey, let the earth bring forth grass. <laughs> we all like grass, right? The herb yielding seed. Big point. And the fruit trees, yielding fruit after his kind, because his fruit is what brings forth life. Almost. Don't trip me up on this, but being that the earth is of feminine quality, bringing forth life, by itself it doesn't. It still needs a seed and plant it in the ground, wherever, to spawn life forward. We know this. 
that's just basics. We know that we can plant a seed and it'll sprout most of the time. Now let's get back to where it said that it is fruit after his kind, right? So whose seed is in itself upon the earth? And it was so. So we get down here in 12. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind. And the tree yielding fruit was seed was un in itself after his kind. So all the different fruits and veggies that are out here for us to eat. They were originally, stuff like blackberries didn't have thorns on them originally. They do now. It explains why these plants still bear food, but not with the ease of getting anymore. In the beginning, we were given the choice of easiness. And we uh, somehow blew it. Or something happened, who knows what, but hey, whatever happened, happened. It's late to change it, especially in this day and age. So where was I here? Let's let, let's find out where, where was I? It's on 12, so we're on 13 now, aren't we? Okay, so in the evening and the morning, we're the third day. So we got three days over with. Quite a bit's happened. And God said, let there be light in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. <gasps> Wait a minute. Did I understand that right? Signs and seasons. You know what that means. That means that for the signs and seasons that they're taught, you know, Let's see if I can find something here that gives us the... Uh, I think it's this one right here. Let's open this one up right here. The sign of the seasons right here. Let's blow it up a little bit. There we go. Signs of the season. The sun, the moon. And if you notice something else in the season and signs... Something to keep looking for. Here's a ball. Kind of shows a city in the center, which is kind of unique. I wonder if this is the uh, burning city of gold that comes barreling in to renew things. Here it's got tail off of it, so you kind of wonder there. Here's the two dragons. And of course, in lore, dragon lore means comets and of course what we're seeing here is a zodiac symbol and if you're looking at this really good you'll see that it has these cross lines right here right here that correlate with the dragon and then you got two lines that go out from a certain point and widen towards the sun and moon which I would take this depiction meaning that whatever this is is coming in through a certain time period and if you look it's kinda of weird but this is a I believe a goat's head and dragon tail and you got a line going over to Libra hello my connection Kind of looks like my symbol from Draga almost, other than the wings, not there. And Libra, I was born in October, so that makes me a Libra. Understand that sign. And of course, you got Virgo, and you got Leo, and you got Scorpio, and you got the crab, which looks more like, in this one, more looks like a lobster than a crab, but hey, that's all right. So, anyway, these are. This is how you're supposed to time keep according to the book. Not by our watches, 
in our Julian calendar that we made up, it seems to be left out stuff for celebrating on the new calendars. I don't understand it, but there are some important days. Much more important than this year's uh, celebration on a certain January day. Not worth celebrating and honoring as our forefathers that uh, lost their lives in uh, December 7th. Let's give them an honor. But this is how we're supposed to timekeep. It's kind of amazing that's what we're supposed to do for timekeeping. So I gotta open that back up because that kind of ruined my presentation. I didn't realize I closed all of that. Oops, sorry, folks. That's not even related. That's has to do with something totally unrelated to this. <laughs> my apologies. There we go. Bring that back up. I know you see this. What? Atlantis. Again? Why is he bringing that up? Well, here in, here in time, we're going to bring up what this caption's all about down there. We need to get back to what it's doing up here, though. Much more important to fill this in for the moment. Get this out of the way. I was down here, 14, and God said, Let there be light in the firmament of heaven, and divide the day and the night, and let them be signs, and for seasons, and for days and years. We don't do that anymore. We don't follow that calendar. So how do we know what time it is according to the celestial calendar? I don't know. I'd have to do a lot of studying myself to find out in the changes that have happened to the calendar system here to make it land-based for us people to pay attention to. So anyway, I'm going to get back up here. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it, it was so. So, out past the waters, in that firmament, that dark stuff, the heaven of heavens, that's where the lights are. Makes sense. I mean, we can see it ourselves. And God made two great lights. A greater light to rule the day, and a lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. <laughs> I'm sure he did. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creatures that hath life and the fowl that may follow above the earth, <coughs> excuse me, in the open firmament of heaven. Whoa. The moving creature that have life abundantly, huh? in the waters so all the creatures in the water come forth first but not just the creatures of the water there's one other creature that came first too equally at the same time according to this and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven 
so that means that birds have been here since day one and all the seafood or sea life has been here since day one so birds are some of the are the oldest animal alive today and have survived repeatedly throughout the life of the earth along with the sea life which we'll get to some of that uh, where are we oh yeah 21 and God created great whales and every living creature that moved the which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every winged fowl after his kind and God saw that it was good I would look at the size of them whales. There's hardly any of them now. Just think the record showing when they whaled and how many were alive compared to today. It's amazing. And yes, we people are at fault for not tendering and taking care of our duty here that we're supposed to. And it's been the downfall of humankind since day one, it seems like. We're not doing our duty, that we're just a simple thing. Tend a garden, eat freely, and have it easy. Just don't eat a couple things and you got it made. No, nah, but we can't do that, can we? It's just like the cookie jar or Doritos. Can't just eat one, can you? Same thing. 21. I think that's where we're at. Nope, I read 21. Let's get down to 22. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let fowl multiply in the earth. So, sea creatures and the birds filled the land and the waters before anything. That's what I'm getting out of that. Is that... That's what's taking place. So, let's get back over here. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Oh, number five. Okay, cool. We're alive on number five. All right. And God said, what did he say? Let the earth bring forth the living creatures after his kind. And what's this? We got cattle. Got to have cattle. Got to have that red beef. You know, there's most of you people out there think that red beef's a problem. It's not. In excess, it's a problem. But little amounts of that protein is good for the brain, actually, to have red meat. Not just veggies at this point but in the beginning no we were supposed to eat just the fruits and vegetables and certain things otherwise we weren't meat eaters in the very beginning it's kind of amazing but we were turned meat eaters because of what happened it even says so so after it's been creating and God's been creating a the beasts of the earth got the cattle and God made the beasts of the earth after his kind I wonder what the beasts are and we're, we're talking the big heavy stuff big stuff you know there were giants at some point but we'll get we'll get to that now where was I and the cattle after his kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let us make man in our... It Whoa! Time out, time out, time out, time out. I should look at my original Bible and see what it actually says about that. R image R. You know R means more than one. 
I mean, oh, hey, guess what? In our image, it says in there, in our R. Who's R? Now, God is a singular, I thought. Of course, that was the Catholic education screwing with my head, not teaching me the complete book because they cherry picked through it, according to the Cardinals. So, anyway, of course, I went way away from it for a long time, but at least I got back into reading books and I see it in a whole different light. This little book is actually a great history book of things that happen. Not things to come. The things that can come are only because there's repetitiveness in a circle. Life's a circle. Things are a circle. Beginning, end, without beginning, without end. Keeps going. The earth is without end. You know, it says all that because it won't. But there'll be renewals from fire and water for sure over the life of the earth. Longer than we're around. So, back at it. In the image of God created he, him. Male and female created he, them. So, right in that sentence, right there, according to that, he made a male and female at the same time. They. Whoever are is, they made. Whoever they are. And we can always research that if people are interested in looking up the they. I think if you uh, look at the Sumerian text, it might explain a little bit more in detail about the they who made us. A slave species to the gods to slave for gold. Another interesting fact that we lust for gold in our genetically. People have this thing for gold automatically and it stems from the very beginning. And it, you read Sumerian texts and you find out why. And that leads me to this book right here. Some people don't agree with uh, Zachariah Stitchin, but I guarantee you that the 12 planets the only one you need to read and people balk at him but I would think that somebody that's highly educated from the Middle East who studied cuneiform tab and studied it for 50 years and translated and wrote books this being one of the first books he wrote a long time ago actually back in the 70s and uh, or even before that I think right around there I'll have to fact check that, you know, the way people are these days. But it was back before recently. And it explains the creation of humans in Sumerian texts in detail versus just this. This is a simplified version. This book was written after Sumerian anyway. When you look at the chronology of written material, the Holy Bible actually comes afterwards. It's written later. So there's stories adapted from earlier put in this book. There's a lot of that where stories are adapted. There must be facts to them because they seem to have managed to take and continue on to this day for a reason. So we know what to expect most likely. But now it tells something in 28 that's pretty fascinating, I guess. It is after they've after God created man and woman, female, male, female only, nothing else. Another thing about that is kind of hard to multiply without the two. Can't have that offshoot. Doesn't work. Sorry, can't give natural birth to offshoots. You can splice and you can dice and you can hand over, but you, uh, yeah. So anyway, and God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and sub 
do it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Dominion. Subdue it. Fascinating words to use to tell the humans, but, you know, at the very beginning, I could probably understand that theory because in the beginning, to survive, it's hard to probably express how important it is to survival and that you're going to just have to be that way. At some point, we had to change our ways because, I mean, there's so many people now that we can't live in that same philosophy, that's for sure. But again, the stories kind of tell you that you don't get to live in that philosophy anyway forever. Changes happen. Whether you want it or not, they happen after a certain amount of time, after a certain amount of growth and rebirth and regrowth and death and rebirth. It's a cycle. That's what I get out of the material. Okay, where were we? And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in which is the fruit of the tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. At this point, there's no red meat. At this point, it's not even talking Adam and Eve, really. Doesn't matter. It really doesn't mention it yet, which is fascinating. And the thing is, is at this point, they made man and woman simultaneously in this one. And maybe that's where the story somehow connects to that Lilith, the first woman to be with Adam, who did not obey. And I know people have a problem with that, but I don't care. I'm not here to view the opinion one way or the other. It just that's one of those things that's written. So take it for what it's written. Not for anything else, just for the way it's written. And Lilith is mentioned very briefly, but it's pretty much said that she was the first wife and She's the one that antagonizes women to be uh, promiscuous, you might say, <laughs> and to do things that are a little out of the spectrum of norm. To have fun, over-the-top fun, you might say. That's her game. And that's kind of a funny tale just in its own. So... After we're supposed to eat fruits and vegetables in the beginning, for me, moves on. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for me, and it was so. Oh, that's pretty cool. Gotta say, you know somebody or some bunch of these whoever more than one of course you know like I said are they're making sure all this stuff's happening and all these things are growing so that the humans can be here and all the life can be here and God saw everything that he had made and behold it was very good and the evening and the morning were the sixth day Woo! Yeah! You know what that means, boys and girls, on a weekday? That means the next day's rest. Of course, that's actually not Sunday, because Sunday is the very first day of the week. That's why I started this podcast today, first day of the week. And we're going to continue on a daily basis, if I can keep up with it and keep everything caught up and going. It's going to be quite an interesting task doing this by myself, so... Please bear with me. I hope you guys are enjoying, and uh, I'm making this somewhat entertaining. I don't know. So, anyway, we're in the second part of Genesis 1. So we're 2-1 now. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. Hosts of them. Well, 
in my opinion, the host of them, of course, are the other planetary bodies we know about. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. Ha oh, Dig it. Dig it. Dig it. I love resting after hard, hard work. Play hard, work hard. They both go hand in hand. Most people that play hard, work hard. I mean, that's a fact. Well, and let's see, you know, and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. Because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. Right on. Just like we do, we rest after we complete a task, you know, and we stay on it and we rest after we're done. The body needs it, you know, we're made in their likeness, not his necessarily. There, I mean, come on, that says our, so there's more than one happening here. There, I mean, obviously, the person that's God in this which you can call Yahweh or whatever, you know, Jehovah or however you wish to give him a name, is a person or a entity or whatever is talking to others in this too. <laughs> so it ain't a soul. That's where I kind of get lost on the religious end of this whole thing. That's why I call this a good history book. It was well written. And no, it wasn't written by herdsmen pushing sheep around because most of those people were kind of illiterate and couldn't read and write. This took somebody to be able to read and write. And we know that takes education. Without education, uh, humans are kind of screwed without education and, and teaching young ones how to do things the right way. So, I think we're on number four now. These are the generations of the heavens. Generations, mind you. And we all know what generations mean. I mean, in, a, in terms right now, but, you know. My grandma was a full generation. That's 100 years. It's one generation. My dad's another generation. Okay? I'm another generation. My sons are another generation, another generation. So... Here we are, we're looking at this, and it says, These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Kind of sounds repetitive to me. Generations means there's been generations of recycling. That's another good point, you know. The Earth's really great at recycling. All life's really good at recycling, except for us humans. We sign it for some reason. The ones that are not native, and that were definitely made to be here for a slave for these people to get gold, I believe. And we'll be back at some point, they promise. Uh, we'll see about that. I would say there's more chances of a, a, an asteroid or comet coming before some extraterrestrial life form landing. Everybody better remember it does say there's a big con that happens and people are fooled by one of the largest fools ever. And I don't know if the blah blah is one of those cons, but I will say that the one thing that could bring the whole world together as one would definitely be an invasion from an outside source, kind of like Ronald Reagan, the president, said. Wouldn't it be great, as he put it, that we could put all our differences aside because all of a sudden there was a threat from the outside? Of course, he liked to deem it towards aliens because of Star Wars but again there's still a threat 
from the outside, where the world as a whole should be worried more about things like that than what they're doing today. Because moving bodies out there pass our way all the time. So there's plenty of things to be paying attention to. Besides some of the rhetoric and garbage they like to sell everybody to keep them amused, dumb, and blind. You know, people should think about Jesus healing a blind man. Uh, after all the things I've read, I'm going to say, Jesus didn't heal a blind man and now he can see because he wasn't physically blind. He was probably going around in life like a lot of people that we consider sheeple these days. Like this with blinders on, just like they do to horses. So the horse doesn't notice these things happening to the side, so it focuses straight ahead. And, uh, you need to take them blinders off and take a look-see. Because there's a lot more to it. So where was I? Oh yeah, we already did four. It's amazing about the generations. So that means that there's been generations, which is amazing when we get into some other literature that crosses over. And that coincides with Atlantis and stories about that and generations and how things happen in a very cycle type events. I mean, you got all sorts of cycles and they, they build and drop. Come around, build and drop. That's a circle for you. I mean, the economy, everything, you name it, it, everything has a cycle to it from short to long. And uh, we're at number five. And of every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. So at this moment, you got a man and woman only who were supposed to be fruitful and multiply and haven't and that's again where the little thing comes from because Lilith didn't want to be a part of the plan you might say <laughs> it's speculative okay so I can't say that for sure there's just written material to kind of lead that way and again like I said written material though got to treat it kind of as factual take a piece and eliminate all the hype and there's a fact somewhere in there so it's amazing there's no rain stuff's grown fruits and vegetables all that stuff's been doing it's there hasn't rained isn't that amazing so anyway as we go to the next page we're gonna find maybe some more answers but it's kind of interesting there was not a man to till the ground, which means at this moment in time, Adam and Lilith haven't been doing the job of reprocreating and making more babies and creating more. They weren't doing it. There was a problem, obviously. So, on six, but there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. Oh, you know, that's kind of like a terrarium, basically. See, that's why we're in, a, we're in an enclosed unit. Because all the plant life creates the mist, the moisture to the clouds that create the rain and help create the fresh water that is around everywhere. I mean... It's an amazing cycle of life. It's like our bodies. The human body is an amazing machine. It's an organic machine that we house ourselves in. I mean, it repairs itself. So if you cut yourself, it heals. If you get sick, you usually get over it because, you know, your body has weapons of mass destruction inside you that knows how to take care of germs. You know, your body learned a lot of that when you were a kid. I'm surprised most people today don't seem to remember that one very well. 
don't understand that. Oh, hey, we're at number seven. Number seven, number seven. Are we at number seven? Yes. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and of breath and breathed into his nostril the breath of life and man became a living soul. Oh, time out. You know what? That means that there was an error and God had to remake man again. Wow. Because here's man being made again. No woman at this moment. Okay. Cool. So his first build was not so successful, obviously, with man and woman made together. And they weren't doing... And they weren't performing already and this place obviously needed crops and stuff like that and well needed all that stuff tended to you can't have a garden without tending the garden gardens don't work without tending that's just the way it is we anybody that's ever done a garden knows that so anyway let's get uh, to number eight here and the lord god planted a garden eastward in eden and there he put the man whom he had formed. Cool, so he stuck the man in the Garden of Eden. Most of us believe that that's where Iraq or Sumer is. And it's possible that's where the Garden of Eden is. But there's other stories that make it in the Northern Hemisphere depending on what culture you're reading from, but everybody has one about an Eden location that's been blocked off to everybody. And we'll get to that too, on maps and ancient things that show that aren't there now, but they're there once upon a time for somebody to mark it down. Oh, where are we? Oh, I lost my place. I got so busy talking. <laughs> yeah. That's right. After he planted the garden eastward in Eden, he planted a specific garden here that needed to be specifically and dealt with so it can spread and be good. That was his plan anyway. And now the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and God for and good for food sorry about that uh, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil now most people probably don't think about this but the yin yang symbol represents the same thing the scale is the same thing you can't have good without evil and the objective is in, in life realistically is to keep a balance there has to be a balance and if there isn't then the natural world the natural order in the world will correct itself and that's what happens when it gets out of balance that's what these books are trying to tell us and we'll get to that that's just I'm jumping way ahead of myself at that point. So let's get back here. So you have a tree of life. It's supposed to give you a forever life. And then you got a tree with good of knowledge of good and evil. So hence the first humans had no idea that they were naked they didn't know nothing they weren't showing nothing which is kind of weird that's brought up but i'm going to bring up a point at this moment because of that is i know there's a bunch of people that understand the uh, fedex and having the white arrow in it and for the longest time it was there but there's a lot of people that never see it until it's pointed out to them that it's there. Their subconscious is seeing it, but their conscious eye is not. Hence the 
Jesus making a blind man see. His subconscious was getting stuff, but consciously he was unaware. And that's what Jesus did. That was his objective, was to make people aware. And he was being successful. That's why the Romans got rid of him, because, you know, you can't be a rebel. long hair rebel like Jesus, because, you know, they persecute people like that. It's been going on for a long time. And he ain't the only one, either. He's just one of many for being persecuted for speaking out, which we're not supposed to do. I'm trying to keep my tongue, keep my sight going so we don't get punished or stop. <laughs> don't need any of that to happen. So anyway, let's get back to the story so we can keep this thing rolling. Uh, where's my time at? Yeah, I better think about wrapping this up real soon. I've been on here long enough for my first podcast. I hope people are out there enjoying it. Again, this podcast is brought to you by Chris Drager. I hope you're enjoying. I hope I'm not boring the shit out of you. Maybe I am. But hey, I hope you're bearing with and hanging in there as I go through this and show things and explain things that give some logic sense, in my opinion. I, I don't know that I'm right. I don't know that I'm wrong. My gut says that I'm right. I like my gut. My gut instinct. Most people have a gut instinct, and most people know that they've learned over their lifetime that that first instinct of the gut was right, and they second guessed and went the other way and was wrong. Well, you know, that's just how life is <laughs> when you are given choice of two roads, easy path. The hard path but always you're given a choice every morning you get up you get two paths to go down and you're given a why and your day begins that way so anyway let's get back to the read here oh we're now on number 10 and a river went out of Eden to water the garden and from thence it was parted and became in and became into four heads now there's something interesting about this most people like to put this in Iraq summer Euphrates rivers all that but there's an old map that I'm gonna introduce after a bit that we'll get into the topic of Eden and the description of the water the river and the garden and how it went and how it parted and then it became into four heads after its exiting and there's kind of an interesting map that kind of actually shows it and we'll get to that one later that's going to be in another podcast from today but I want to continue reading because we're not even that far into this this literature right here and I yet have other literatures that I need to read that correspond so this can be a definitely a long series pod podcast going on for days and days so I hope people join me probably won't be every day but I sure hope people join me when I am able to get on here with finished material and ready to go anyway we're on number 11 right here right there the name of the first is Pison. That is which compasses the whole land of Havilah. Havilah, hmm. That name sounds familiar, Havilah. Where there is gold. Gold. <laughs> My favorite topic, gold. Gold panning. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, that brings me to my character, Cactus Jack. Panning with Cactus Jack. Yeah, that's me. Well, anyway, gold. Yes, day one, gold. Like I said, we were meant to mine the gold for the gods, I believe, or whatever you want to call them. Okay, they don't even have to be gods. They can be whatever you want to call them. Um, we were made. To service them for the gold 
the minerals for where they live. I believe the, the material written leads to that fairly clearly. If you want to take stuff literally, or for truth anyway, let's put it that way, put as truthful as it can be. You know there's highlights in any storytelling. So, anyway, let's get back to this highlight and storytelling. Anyway, I'm going to do some more storytelling. I hope you guys are enjoying. I'm having a blast doing this because I love the subject matter. So, here we go. Back at it. Number 12. And the gold of that land is good. <laughs> of course it is. There is Bedlam and the Onyx Stone. Yeah, I looked that up. Quite an interesting looking stone. We'll, we'll get to that. I'm going to show that. We'll touch that topic to those stones on my next podcast, actually. And we'll get back here in 13. And the name of the second river is Gion. The same is it that encompass the whole land of Ethiopia. Well, that tells you what you need to know there. What the name of the second river is. And it encompasses the whole land of Ethiopia. Now, on today's maps and world, there probably is not a river that encompasses the whole land of Ethiopia. It's pretty dry there these days. Which we'll get into that and look at that too. Again, that's why there's going to be multiple podcasts involved in this one. And I hope everybody's enjoying. Here we are. We're at number 14. Here comes number 14. And the name of the third river is Adakal. That is, which goes toward the east of Assyria. Okay. Those places are easy to look up on a map. Names are available. Places like that. And the fourth river is Euphrates. And that's pretty cool. Most people understand where that's at. You know, summer, Iraq, and that part of the world. At least I know where that's at. Hopefully you guys all know where that's at. I assume everybody does. I assume most people have heard this story anyway. But hell, it's better to rebrace this story and do this than the topics that are on the news, don't you think? I mean, this has got to be better than what you hear daily on the news. <laughs> Which we're not going to even cover. Alright. Where the heck was I? I lost my place, lost my train of thought. How do you... Go figure. That's what happens when you get older. Oh yeah, here we are, number 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Again, gardening. You can't have a nice garden if you don't dress it and keep it. You do that, you get these wonderful, beautiful gardens. People prove that all the time. I've seen some awesome gardens, but they are tended with love and care. You know... Love and care. Remember that, folks. Love and care. Those are key words to everything out there. Is love and care. For anything and everything and everybody out there. If you don't, well, there's consequences for all that. We all know it. And deep down in our guts, we know it. Even if we deny and we're deniers, our guts tell us the truth. Even when we deny, we our gut tells us the truth. At least that's my personal experience. I like to believe other people are similar. I think we're all very much similar. I don't care what your skin color is. Well, that's right. I'm not white. I'm a Jew, German Jew. And in the summertime, I get olive color skin. So it's only because being in the Northern Hemisphere that I lighten up in the first place. <laughs> Gives me that Greek, that Mediterranean look. Kind of like a friend of mine, you know, his mom's got that nice Mediterranean rich skin. 
uh, Zoli, my friend Zoli. Shout out to him. His mom, grandma from Hungary. So, yeah, they got that Mediterranean dark skin. Hopefully Zoli's out there watching this podcast. I don't know if he is. He'll probably shoot me for even mentioning his name on here. Well, anyway, let's get back to my reads. Uh, so they're keeping the garden. He's got man there keeping the garden. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you mayest freely eat. That's pretty cool. Like that idea, freely eat? Yes, definitely. Ah, 17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day thou eats thereof, thou shalt surely die. So, whatever this tree is that gives people knowledge, which I think modern people have come to understand to be stuff like mushrooms or peyote, things like of that nature that give you knowledge. You know, there's mind-expanding drugs, and tribal people have used stuff, DMT, there's... A range of plants even in the jungle there's plant mixtures that the people say that's how they've learned how to do and everything it's right to doing that plant and that concoction because part of it's in our bodies DMT stuffs in our body apparently well of course as we know some of those magic mushrooms or you know, different mushroom types that have different strengths can kill a person. That's a definite for sure, you know, so not everybody dies from it, but it could have effects later on down the road, who knows, but that's what they're basic, that's what it's getting at, is it's a, it's something that gives you the ability of foresight, broaden your vision. I think we're I'm pretty sure I got some friends out there that we shared broadening a vision many years back. <laughs> uh, would it be to be young again? Of course, I got to say the body is the only thing that doesn't feel young. Little brain up here, it feels younger. It it hasn't grown old and up, <laughs> as far as I can tell. Well, anyway, let's get back at it. 18 and the Lord God said it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him and Help me for him hmm. So he's basically gonna he's talking he's gonna make him a woman because now he's alone because the first woman failed according to the one story of Lilith. now this just could be some of the same stuff being interjected again about the first build of humans but I don't think so I think there was trial and error you know just like any test tube babies there's trial and error DNA splicing trial and error anything like science it's trial and error till they get it right well same thing here because you remember it's made in his image and likeness and everything so we have the same temperament same everything people ask well, why can't he it he uh, let this have that happen because humans can do that because we're made just like that we have jealousy we have anger we have happiness you know all that so we share all that happiness and love and peace that's the best thing to share and that's pretty much what it tries to get people to understand that's most important and when you deviate from it, well, you end up in the chaotic situation we're in today. So we're at 19. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them and whatsoever Adam called every living creature. 
that was the name thereof. There we go. We got Adam. And it's spelled differently in different tongue. It's spelled like the Adam, Adam, you know, little tiny Adam in certain language. That's kind of fascinating. That's why I say the test tube baby thing. <laughs> These were advanced science made us humans. So where are we? Okay. We're at number 20. And Adam gave names to all cattle. So that's how we got the name of the cattle we know. The heifers and, <laughs> and the different. I wonder why he called it that in the first place. That's an interesting name for a cow. And to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found any help meet for him. Now see, I find this new updated King James downloadable version not that great. I should be reading out of my really, it's over 200 years old, this Bible I have. It's hard reading because it's uh, real English. And so it's really just a little easier for me to read quickly. And I'm not doing a great job with that, am I? I'm only on page 8. Holy cow, we're not making headway. Or are we? Well, you know, you guys can make comments. Leave me notices. Uh, by the next podcast, I should be able to uh, respond or comment on anybody's comments. Uh, I will answer all. I will debate or talk discuss any of the matter with anybody's willing to discuss it so you know, give me a shout out let's change the page because we're on the next page so at this point we have a medical procedure I believe ha happening because if you know you're the almighty sovereign you know I've got magical power I can do things with my mind my hands I'm just putting that out there first before I read this and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept count backwards from 10 10 9 8, 7. aha <laughs> medical And he took one rib, one of his ribs, and closed up the flesh instead of there, of. Now, I'm sorry, I gotta stop a second. Closed up the flesh. Again, there's probably some great power somewhere some whatever spiritual being way the hell out there somewhere but that's not this right here it's sad that the church especially the roman catholic church used this to weaponize and manipulate and control massive population that's what they've done with this poor book and besides if you look at my original book it tells you how to read it when to read it you're supposed to start reading it January, and it's supposed to take a full year to read the complete Bible. I mean, it, mine actually has, which I will, not today, but I will t take some pictures of it because it's delicate. And I'll open up and take some photos. And so you can see what I'm explaining, that the new versions are garbage, really. I mean, if you want real hard stuff, this... Well, you know what? Well, I'm sitting here for just a second. I'm going to open the book and show you some couple pages of it. i got to be real gentle with it because... You know, just so people can see. Here's the illustrations in this Bible. Like I said, there's no copyright date in this book. 
and I'm going to try and hold it up here so you can see. But it has information on how to read. It has dictionary, chronological orders, king's lists. Tells you who put together the Bible actually in here, who the scholars were that actually in the decisions made on what was put in here. And it tells you actually how to read it, when to read it, has measurements, it has everything. I mean, it has stuff in here that you're not going to see in any modern Bible, that's for sure. But I'm just curious about that because that's Genesis 3, right? That I was, you know. Instead of there, uh, that's right, the rib part. The rib part of the story. Yeah, there's that many pages of stuff before you even get to start reading the main. And of course, this is well protected. Lord's Prayer in this book. You won't find this in any uh, new little handheld job. I took this to a church once just to see what would happen. They told me to take it home and gave me a new Bible. It's great and all that you got that Bible, but yeah, I'd appreciate it if you don't bring that because, of course, I ask questions. They don't particularly care for people in the church to actually ask questions. They want you to just listen and follow their direction. So, I'm just curious. I was back there reading something. I was just curious to see if there's any changes in writing between this and that. It's pretty much the same. But just because, I'm going to read it anyway. And we'll see what happens here when I read this. So, and the Lord caused, so 22, huh? So let me find. Twenty-one, and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. So that's still the same, I didn't change that. But I have found things where there's changes. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Ooh, 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 I better not say that too much. You know, I'm gonna, I might make some. Well, anyway, there's some, you know what, out there that might find that offensive these days. And age. Maybe everything I'm saying is offensive to people. But there's no filter on this program, because I don't have a filter. And because of this, on 24, therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. This is the minute that our internal, what makes us who we are, our souls, our energy, being, whatever you choose to call it. When copulations happen between two people, there's an interaction between souls. And I don't know if anybody's ever watched Frankenstein, the movie, which I'm assuming everybody has at this point. Uh, 
that you see how he creates life, put the piece together, but what's he do to get it going? A big, huge jolt of electricity. And I'm just going to say this, is that, well, a couple can have sex and never produce children. And some uh, don't understand why. It's because, well, I could say this, that it, it has to do with a mutual release of energy between two people. When two people reach climax at the same peak moment with an output of such energy, that seems to be the moment that I believe life is brought forth in the woman's womb. Is that release of all that electrical energy because inside any of us flows electricity I and mean, that's another proven fact too so again at the extreme moment of moment of copulation if the two people are of equal and intense energy flow equatedly I mean equally at that moment is when life is made if you got one partner just whatever usually one or the other if there's not if there's not actual this you don't create another I mean that's pretty simple I believe you know I believe from my schooling the one thing to keep in this whole thing the whole time we're talking and thinking about this is one principle that I was taught for diagnostics and Figuring out problems is, which has helped me a hell of a lot, is the KISS principle. Keep it simple, stupid. Don't look and sit there and ponder and create something more than it is. That's usually one of the biggest downfalls of most mechanics that aren't very good at diagnostics. It's spend your money on needlessly spent parts because they spend too much time looking for the bigger than the practical and when you keep it simple it always ends up being the simple shit it's always that two dollar fifty cent part never that two hundred dollar part most of the time once in a while that big expense stuff goes but most of the time it's simple and anybody that's been a mechanic any time of their life knows that this principle is to be true they've learned it over time by wrenching and working on different things so they know that I'm not talking the utter nonsense like garbage when it comes to that. So anyway, where was I? Twenty-three. We'll go back up to where I was reading because I was reading out of my old King James sixteen eleven, mind you. Authors, uh, it's an authentic, authorized 1611 King James Bible that I have. I mean, it's old. And I learned that because it doesn't have a copyright in the front, means that it was printed in Europe and not here. So, without any dates, it predates America, which makes this Bible actually <laughs> way old. So it's nice to have a piece of history that's in decent shape that's readable it's legible and literature that I can read like I said it's like awesome this one is an awesome history book beats any other Bible I've ever looked at just because of the content in it and it all has to do with its age so where was I oh yes it says right up here that uh, Adam said this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh that's when our energy fields and our souls and our in inner sides of us actually make contact and we know this to be true because we know that there's people when you look deep in their eyes you see it you see the people you are drawn to through their eyes because your souls connect that's why they love this new medium because the souls are not connecting we're not touching each other physically and unfortunately 
our spiritual side of us needs physical contact with other beings. Disconnect like this is very hard on us. And you'll find, just, you'll, you'll see how hard this will become on us. Well, anyway, let's get back to the part of this podcast that has nothing to do with that doom and gloom because there's more to come. When it comes to doom and gloom, there's always something to talk about. So let's get back to the beginning and flesh and, you know, copulations and stuff like that. It's a much better topic, I don't you think? <laughs> so anyway, oh, forgive me for saying that. Don't strike me down. Just trying to make my podcast lively and fun. And there, oh, hey, I guess that gets us to 24. Therefore shall a man leave his and cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh, which we all know what that means. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. At this moment, they didn't even know what nakedness was. It's like that arrow in FedEx until it's pointed out. Had no clue that I would, you know, had no clue. I mean, it's pretty specific about this stuff. So anyway, I think we should stop the podcast right about here and pick up for another day so I can put some other stuff together. And I got a couple of things I want to put together to go with this. I already have it. But I need to round it up, and I've been yakking on for quite a while. And I've been at this longer than I thought I would sit here and do. I thought I'd only do maybe 20 minutes, but I'm looking at the time. And I think I better put a stop to what I'm doing <laughs> for the moment, and we'll call it an evening. I appreciate everybody that came in and, and joined in this. And hope you come back for others that I will be... Uh, doing here in the next day or two i will have another podcast live stream coming and we'll pick up where we left where i left off at which is right here on genesis 3 but only a little bit more on that and then i move into a different piece of literature still aimed around similar topic but different literature altogether and again please don't look at what i'm reading as religious even though it says what it says for my sake, I'm not doing this to be religious. I'm just, I want to show literature and see if there's any truth to anything that's in anything written. I mean, come on. If you got a guy that can find Troy based off of the book Iliad and turn it from fiction to fact, just think when we get to the topic of Atlantis here and how this island fits something I'm going to show everybody eventually right down in here. So anyway, again, I appreciate all you people coming to my podcast again. My name's Chris Drager, and I appreciate you coming and watching the Arm of Draga podcast. Well, anyway, I hope everybody had a great time with me. I'm going to... Uh, Sign us out now, and everybody have a great evening. Everybody take care. God bless. And may we have a better year and better life for all of us. And until next time, same bat channel, same psychedelic place. This is... Chris Drager, and I'm out of here. You guys take care and enjoy. Slow area.